it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. So today we are going to be reviewing episode one of season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'll be going over both the entrance and runway looks of the contestants, and then finally talking about the lip sync. Well, you know, I'll, I'll judge it the best I can from what I can see through the Vaseline filter. If you're new here and you're wondering where all of my old videos are, I did have to remove them from YouTube due to a copyright strike fiasco. And if you're looking for them, they can now be found exclusively on Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now let's get into these workroom and Entrance looks. First into the workroom is Chanel. No, not the handbag, the drag queen. She is one of my all time favorite queens. I love the cockiness on this bit. <gasps> She's everything and more. I think that anybody could hope to be in a drag queen. She's fabulous, polished, has amazing looks. She later tells us that she has $25,000 of costuming and rhinestones with her, 22 pairs of shoes, and <gasps> Things with Versace buckles on them. First of all, I love the makeup trends, those pencil thin little eyebrows. Her outfit is just so much very like early 2000s celebrity goes to the VMAs. It's reminiscent of a girl basically wearing like a visible G string out of some low rider jeans, but like the drag version of it. <laughs> but also like if she was an older woman, She's got all these huge like retro styled earrings. She's like barely wearing a wig. I think she just kind of has a topper placed on top of her hair that's like pulled back. And her natural boy hair is like twisted and curled and like gelled back in the back and sideburns. She's got her <gasps> hanging out. I think she looks good. It's just so different to see something like this in today's context, but I'm gonna give this entrance like a rot. <laughs> it's bad. Her body yada yada looks amazing though. Good God. Next in the workroom is Nina Flowers. There is not one poor unfilled with foundation on this mug. She is like the original queen of makeup. Wow, that swoop that goes like halfway <laughs> back through her bald head. Queen of like bald heads and wearing loafs. I really honestly don't like a loaf, but Nina has a way of doing it. I think that is admirable and she pulls it off, I think. And again, with the style of clothes, Nina is wearing this like hotel receptionist blazer. <laughs> and like this old lady jewelry, but it is some sort of really interesting pattern. I have to say the orange is really fun and striking. It's fitted very, very well. I think she looks hot. I'm loving the realness of the outfits of what they're wearing. Everything back then was just so much more like what a woman would wear. Even stuff that's like ready to wear now that a lot of queens will put on and perform in isn't something that you would see a natural everyday woman walk the streets in. Speaking of ready to wear, <laughs> Fresh from Forever 21, Rebecca Glasscock walks in. Y'all, I cannot deal, I cannot deal. This is so much to absorb, to take in. It's shocking to me that like, this was drag, okay? Back in 2009, everyday woman. Imagine now if somebody walked into the workroom wearing this. Okay, if I ever get cast on Drag Race, I'm wearing Rebecca Glasscock's outfit. Rebecca Glasscock out of drag, trade, he is so handsome. In drag, very pretty, very naturally pretty. There's not a lot of makeup on these girls. I mean, she looks pretty, but girl, Bootleg cheats! Ah! <laughs> it's a rot. It's a rot. Oh my god. Angina walks in. <sighs> Sweet little Angina. Again, another like wigless queen. If you're keeping track, Chanel, Nina, and now Angina do basically not have wigs on. And everyone's being so nice. They're like, hi, look beautiful. Angina looks so adorable. I have to give her a hot. I love little black fascinator with the feather, the gold bag. Girl, a sensible woman always carries a bag into the workroom. Okay, come on. But the casualness of it all, this little like white ruffled kind of like piratey top tucked into some pants. And next into the workroom, everybody's favorite dish, pork chop. She is the first to leave this episode, but certainly not the first to leave our hearts. So she walks in also from the mall. I think she was the manager at the store that Rebecca Glasscock worked in. She's got a spicy red hair, something you would see like an older woman wear, like it's grayed, but she went to the salon and got it dyed red just because she wanted to feel her fantasy that day. Pork chop actually has on quite a bit of makeup, I'll say for like relatively here. I think I'll give pork Pork chop a sizzling hot. And next in the room, coming for blood, it's Akasha. Her name, I think, is inspired by the movie Queen of the Damned. Concerning her workroom entrance look, kind of living, okay?
okay, she actually is one of the only queens I would say is in like full drag, right, by today's standard. She's wigged, she's painted, she has jewelry on, she's got on a spicy little outfit. It's strappy, I hate the pattern, I hate the color, but I have to give her a hot because she was putting in the effort on day one. Akasha is built too. You can see those abs and that cutout. Elvis, she has the confidence to show off that super strong body and stuff. And then she's like comparing her body to Chanel's and in her confessional, she's like, Chanel's ass was a little bit flabby. Mine's solid muscle. <laughs> And back from a short jaunt in the woods where she was walking children in nature, it's Tammy Brown. Oh, this bitch, this bitch is so crazy. She won my heart like from day one. The insanity, the kookiness, like her eyebrows are so high and the wig, Miss Tammy Forehead Brown. So this is another look where a queen has incorporated their boy hair. That's why the hairline looks so crazy because he has his normal man hairline pushed back and then he's got like, like a wig topper in the back. This is just <gasps> that you do not see today. You do not see this. It does not happen. Literally clip and extensions. I'm shook. I'm so shook. She's got on this really terrible, like mint green dress. The cut, oh God. The look is not great. The look is not great. I'm gonna give her a hot for the, for like the 2009 standard. I think it looks like she did put in a really good amount of effort. Next in the workroom is Jade. I think that she's not wearing a wig. It looks like she's done the same thing that Tammy has done where they've just like clipped hair into their natural boy hair. This is wild. I've got to give the look a hot. Although girl, the shoe. <laughs> I hate that shoe. She's got on like a three inch pump and it has like the little anklet strap and she's got tights on. So like the biscuits are like hanging out for everybody to see. She does have a bag though. Okay, that was big. That was really big. Everyone's drag is very much like, can I achieve realness or like passability as a woman rather than can I be some sort of avant-garde character, which I think drag has turned into more nowadays, right? Nina was already there back in the day. She was like pioneer, but so many of the girls are just ready to hit the streets, go to the mall, go shopping. The big hoop earrings, the glasses on the head. She was like, I just dropped the kids off and I've got to go to this thing. It's called RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm not really sure. I'm just going to go like check it out and like PTA meeting. I'll see you later. Cameroon. Wow. Okay. Next in the workroom is BB. <laughs> you guys, I literally can't. I literally cannot. So BB is like ready to work her everyday desk job. Like she probably was just in her office at the cubicle and she said, I'm gonna take this two weeks of vacation. I'll see you guys later. I will resume my desk job after this little this little stint that I'm gonna do. I might may, may or may not be on TV in a year. Stay tuned. The, the short little pussycat wig. I've gotta give BB a hot. She looks great. She does, yeah. Okay, so next up I have to talk about RuPaul on the trigger warning. It was called she Mail. Everything back in the early days of Drag Race was just more about like puns on men becoming women and the, the transition between the two. Of course, that did get changed eventually in response to the changing world, really. You know, 2008, nine was such a different time, which is excellent. And just to make it 100% clear, I think all drag is valid and everybody is able to do and participate in drag culture. Rue makes a <laughs> Trump, Oprah, and Tyra Banks joke in this little she thing. If that doesn't tell you what was going on in 2008, I don't know what will. And Raven certainly was not doing Rue's makeup back then. That's all I'll say about that. Let's get into the runway looks. The runway theme is drag on a dime. So Rue walks the main stage. That has been a tradition since day one. I'm living for the amount of blur and Vaseline on this camera in particular. There's some shots where it seems like there isn't so much of that added, but this one, girl, as she's coming down that runway, it's like, is, is that, could it be? Is it possible? It's RuPaul. <laughs> and then there she is at the end of the runway. The runway may have been short, but Rue's personality was big. I'll give her a hot. Nina though, girl, she was doing her, she is a talented MUA. <laughs> She's got on this really, really like very club kid look. Her hair looks like a, it's like a stack of hay just plopped on top of her head. And then she's got this like little like circlet of hair around her forehead. There's a red blazer with googly eyes and other little like fascinators glued on to the shoulders. There, there's like a weird belt tassel, some tartan capris. This has on capris. <laughs> Complete with some black boots. Wow. 
You know, for a design challenge, even back then, this is pretty good. I'm gonna give this look a hot. I love that it's alternative. It's very Nina. She knew exactly who she was. She is an artiste. I have so much respect for this person. Y'all, Kasha comes out looking fierce. Oh my God, hot, hot, hot. There's not much drag going on. There is like barely anything on her body. And I'm not really sure how this outfit in particular relates to the whole drag on a dime thing. It looks kind of just like a, like a little cutout top and a little mini skirt. It just looks like something she picked up from the mall, but I think she does look hot still regardless. The body is showing these giant hoops. Girl, the bigger the hoop. And then a sassy little pussycat. Love to see it. If you're dirty, she's got you covered. Next up is Angina. <laughs> she has constructed an outfit made of loofahs that she has sewn together into this little fantasy. Very on brand for Angina. This is a silhouette I think that she reuses several different times this season and even to this day. That very strappy shoulder with the poof on the rest of the body. It's like a shapeless shape. She kind of makes herself this poofy little ball of energy with these arms and legs just like sticking out. <laughs> she's so adorable some curtain straps I'd, and there's some little bows like attached to the straps going over her shoulders and her signature fascinator using the same tool that is constructing the rest of the can we call it a dress it's sedzy squeaky clean and hot i will say i do wish her head was fully bald i'm totally here for the bald queen thing and that's her thing and she owns it but i would have loved to have seen her shave her head i don't know why she didn't for this runway poor job her inner confessional as she's walking out on the runway, she says, I hate my outfit, but this is what I've got. <laughs> I'm living. I don't know what she has constructed, but I don't like it either. She's got this little like green Christmas bow on one hip. These like black little shoulder pad things. Again, because of the quality, I, I have no idea what she has even made this out of, but it is wild. The dress has no shape. It's a box. It's a box cut with a headband. Mama. I know they said drag on a dime, but girl, I, I you got to spring more than a penny. Okay, this is a rot. How much wood could a drag queen chuck wood if a drag queen could Chuck Wood. BB has hot glued wood chips to this little cocktail dress. <laughs> BB walks down the runway, natural legs. All these queens are just bare legged. They are fully shaving their legs, oiling and lotioning them up to like hit those runway lights. Gag. This is actually a really cute dress. And then she takes off the belt like halfway down the runway. And then she has it as if she's <laughs> like waiting tables coming down the runway. And this hair, we are going to see this hair again, I believe, throughout this season, maybe several times. Chop down the tree. She looks hot. And next on to the runway, a sensible orange <laughs> vested camo print thing. I think she has used pieces of candy to construct e her earrings or maybe they're like wax pieces. I have no idea. Then some giant like pearl things on a headband. Her body looks amazing. We've got to give that body a hot. But the outfit, girl, what in the world? It's like a little bikini with a shawl and a parasol. She's ready for a day at the beach. She's going to get her tan on while the kids are playing in the ocean. And if they drown, who cares? One less kid to take care of. Again with the hair. So no wig here, just a little topper. And then she's got some color spray on her edges to not only contour her face, but give that illusion of hair. I don't see that on any queens, really. I think that was a very pageanty thing that has maybe gone away. Maybe pageant girls still do it. I don't know. I'm not part of that scene. Chanel, I'm really confused what these materials were. I've got to give it a rot. Row, row. Next up is Jade. She's giving us a, like, a little safari moment. It's, it's, it, I don't know really what's going on here. There's a fringy skirt. It, it, there's so so much fringe. Like there are at least 20 bed sheets that have been cut up and fashioned into a skirt and then also a bra top. And then she's got a tiki torch. The tiki torch. Girl, is it lit? That's what I want to know. Because if the tiki torch is not lit, you're not doing drag. Miss Jade was serving it on the runway, okay? And again with the body, part of that realness that everybody wanted to achieve was showing off that body. I love that Jade really took us into a fantasy here and had a lot of sassiness on the runway. I give it a hot. Don't drop her. She might shatter. Rebecca Glass. Cock. She looks like she's wearing a shark tooth, but it looks like she's got a big bite in the center of this skirt that she's created. And there's like these little metal teeth going along the inner hem. And then this really sharp piece jutting out. She says this describes her from top to bottom. And I want to know what the hell does it say about her? Aluminum foil fantasy queen. The materials are a little weird together and she's got this bizarre triangular cutout, but I don't think it's very acute. It's going to be a rot for me. These queens had 
confidence too. Like they knew what they were serving was bad, but they were gonna give it to you. Next up, Miss Tammy Brown. She, girl, she went back in time, all the way back to the 30s, got this swimsuit, the little cover up and brought it to the runway. This is so cute. She did a fantasy, it's a period piece. It's very on brand for who Tammy Brown is. Looks like she actually spent some time and knows how to actually make outfits outside of using unconventional materials. I'm gonna give this like a hot. I cannot get over season one of Drag Race. Y'all, I haven't watched this in so long. This is such an experience for me. Like it has been years since I've revisited this fully. There are five judges on this judging panel squished into the <laughs> this small little table meant to accommodate at max three, but trust they fit five people behind that table. Yes, they did because they have Bob Mackie, Merle Ginsburg, Santino Rice, Mike Ruiz, and RuPaul. I know they must be sweating that all that body heat that close together, girl. So also RuPaul says, we've calculated your scores. I would love to know if they are still using some sort of like scoring system these days. Like, like is there a scorecard for every episode that exists in some production file cabinet somewhere? Because we need to see them. We need the tea. So in the bottom two of this episode, are Victoria, Porkchop, Parker, and Akasha. I would have considered maybe putting Rebecca Glasscock in the bottom. However, I can definitely see maybe they wanted to reward her for taking a bigger chance than Akasha did. Akasha and Victoria are lip syncing to the, the You Better Work RuPaul song. I don't think that Porkchop knows the words. She has her mouth like closed and she's doing these little like soft like pageant twirls. <laughs> Akash is giving us like a bad girl lip sync, just kind of giving some like Rihanna S&M vibes. <laughs> Anyways, Nina Flowers does win this episode and obviously that is going to be my hottest hot. I also asked my patrons over on patreon.com to vote for their hottest hot. And this week they've chosen Nina Flowers. And if anyone was curious, yes, this episode does end with drag queens wildly dancing on the stage to the music. That has been a day one thing. This show had so much charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent from the beginning. My channel is made possible by my patrons over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen. They get things like access to my deleted video archive, early access, their name and credits, personal shout outs, and more. I also wanna give a special shout out to Alex, Blythe, Caroline, Catherine, Chris, Chris Crystal, Curtis, Derek, Ed, Elizabeth, Elvin, Hannah, Hassan, Ivan, James, Janine, Joseph, Kevin, Kind of Emo, Kind of White Girl, Maxwell, Michelle, Miguel, Oscar V, Oscar D, Terry, Rick, Stephanie, Susan, Taco Sita, Timotheus, Vanessa, Veronica, Zincat, Midnight19, and Drew, who are all supporting me at the hot tier. Bradley, Cameron, Craig, Glenn, Jenny, Kiki, and John, Mike, Nix, Sailor, Shannon, Sunshine, and Tina, who are all supporting me at the hottest hot tier, and Marty, Matthew, and Tom, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments and press a like, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you wanna see the rest of my Retro Hotter Rots for season one of Drag Race. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Love you, bye.